So in moving plates, we'll be having again three different cases. First case will be the plate will be vertical and moving. Second case, the plate will be inclined and moving. Third case, the plate will be curved and it will be moving. So let's derive the formula for each of the cases. So here we have taken the velocity of the plate as u and the velocity of the jet as v. So let's derive the formula for the force exerted. So this is the Newton's second law of motion that this rate of change of momentum gives you force and m can be written as rho a v. Here we have to consider the relative velocity since the jet is also moving and the plate is also moving so here you cannot take the velocity of the jet here you have to consider the relative velocity which comes out uh, when you subtract the velocity of the jet with the velocity of the plate so v minus u is the relative velocity which you need to consider in case of moving plates so you cannot take the velocity of jet here the relative velocity has to be taken now v1 is the velocity of the plate before velocity of the jet before striking the plate and v2 is after striking the plate so v1 again will be v minus u that is relative velocity before striking the plate and v2 is the velocity of the plate after striking the plate that is normal to the plate so here we don't have any component of velocity which is normal to the plate hence v2 is zero So the force exerted by a jet on a moving plate having velocity u is rho a v minus q the whole square. So the next example is for uh, inclined plates. So here the plate is inclined, the angle made by the jet with the plate is theta. Here again we need to calculate the force exerted by the jet on the plate. That is a normal component of the force we need to calculate first. And then we can calculate the x and the y component of the force. First we need to calculate the normal, com normal component of the force that is exerted by the jet on the plate. So if you need to calculate the normal component of force, the velocity also has to be the normal component of velocity. Normal component of velocity, when I say it means the normal component of velocity that is entering and the normal component of velocity that is leaving the plate. Since the velocity that is leaving the plate is along the plate, so there is no normal component of velocity which is, so there is no component of velocity which is normal to the plate. Hence here again V2 will be zero. So the velocity that is entering the plate is not the normal component, it is making some angle. So we need to calculate first the normal component of velocity that is entering and again we need to calculate the normal component of velocity that is leaving. Since as you can see in the diagram the velocity component that is leaving is along the plate. So there will be no normal component. So V2 is automatically zero next year. Again we have to find the component of velocity that is entering, the normal component. Since here the plate is moving with velocity u, 
you again you have to consider the relative velocity you cannot con consider the absolute velocity absolute velocity has to be considered only when the plate is stationary So here's the formula for the normal component of the velocity, I mean the normal component of the force that is exerted on the plate which is rho a v minus u square into sin theta. Now we can easily calculate the x and the y component of the forces. x component of force is sin times the normal component, y component of force is the cos times the normal component. So for inclined plates you have the normal component, the x component and the y component of force. Now let's move on to the third category that is moving plate which is curved. Here again I have taken the velocity of the plate as u and the velocity of the jet as v. So the formula for calculating force remains the same. So the force formula is m times v1 minus v2. So here let's calculate the y component of force first. So here we'll calculate the x component of the force first and then we'll calculate the y component. So when the force that you are calculating is x component, the velocity is also has to be the x component of velocity that is v1 is the x component of velocity that is entering the plate and v2 is the x component of velocity that is leaving the plate. And here since the plate is moving, the velocity has to be relative velocity not absolute velocity. So the formula is V1 minus V2. As you can see, V1 is the x component of velocity that is entering the plate, and minus is already there in the formula, and V2 is the com x component of velocity that is leaving the plate, which is V minus U cos theta in the opposite direction. So it is minus of minus times V minus v U cos theta. So the x component of force is rho a v minus u square 1 plus cos theta. Now let's calculate the y component of force. So the formula remains the same y component of force is m times v1 minus v2. Here v1 v2 are the y component of velocities. v1 is the y component of velocity that is entering the plate and v2 is the y component of velocity that is leaving the plate.
so the y component velocity comes out to rho a v minus u square sin theta so that was all about the different cases of moving plates we saw flat plates that is vertical flat plate with move, which is moving with velocity u we saw inclined flat plates which is moving with velocity u then we saw curved plates which is moving with velocity u so we derived different formulas for that so that's it about the topic thank you